Looking good, Wade. Put your pre-orders in at Dark Side Toys. <laughs> look at Morbius all lurking in the shadows. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the whole Spider-Man Legends Venom Pool wave. Now, you know how this works. I get a wave in, I can't help myself. I gotta do the whole wave. Especially when I wanted the wave mostly for the Build-A-Figure. I'm okay with a, a lot of these figures, and I was really interested in the new sculpt on Venom and Carnage. But, really, you give me a Deadpool Build-A-Figure, and... I and as always, when it comes to a full Marvel Legends wave, special thanks to Dorkside Toys. But in this wave, we get a Maximum Venom Miles Morales. Another character lurking back here is Carnage. There's Maximum Venom Ghost Spotter. The Living Vampire Morbius. There's Symbiote Phage building up on that team. And then, of course, there is Movie Venom. I ain't gonna lie. I like the movie. It's just big, dumb fun. And them sculpting a whole new figure for the movie version of Venom... <laughs> Give it a shot, right? You'll also notice that all the packages, like previous Venom waves, it's in a nice white color, except for Venom himself. But there you see all the nice artwork on the side. On the back is the bios. It gives you a little history of each of the characters, plus a pretty promotional shot. And then the rest of the figures in the wave, again, except Venom, he gets his own just boop, here he is. Well, I didn't even notice that he didn't have a Build-A-Figure piece. It's almost like an individual movie figure stuck in the case. But I always like these side-by-side -side shots. I don't like it as much as the old school half faces where it just kind of merged into the next character, but okay. Warnings, small parts. Hey, don't put them in your mouth. Nope, not happening. On the top, we get logos corresponding to what it's supposed to be. Morbius doesn't get anything for some reason. And then, once again, there's your movie Venom logo. But looking through these, who are we gonna open first? What's going on here? Let's open Phage, because I have the least attachment to him. Plus, he's using that Bucky Cat body, so we essentially know what we're getting into here. But looking at the overall figure, I <laughs> there's always something about a symbiote, isn't there? There's some smoothness and some sliminess. There's some shininess, but there's also always something to break up the design in kind of a creepy way. I wasn't reading comics at the time that the five symbiotes popped up, so when I got them out, it was kind of a surprise. I was like, what are these pointy things? And why are those coming out of his arms? And oh, legs, nice. Not the legs themselves, but there's those spikies sticking out. So while this does use a body that we are intimately familiar with at this point, it has some changes to it that spruces it up a bit. But I do dig the gold color of it. It's not a chromy, reflective gold. It's yellowish, yes, but it's not straight up yellow, which is good when we bring Scream into the picture. These spikes are a rubbery material, so you're not gonna stab yourself when you're poking at it. Same thing for down here, they are secure on there, which helps make it feel more integrated into the body itself. For this spiky back piece, it's just a back plug. Yeah, most of the figures have that hole in the back, but it's shaped to contour directly to the back muscle so it feels part of the body too. And then as far as paint goes, just some black splotches. It's hard to mess this up, really. Even if it misses or is messy in places, yeah, it's supposed to look like that. And I like how it kind of seeps off those attachments too. But then we get to the head and it is that tried and true symbiote head. It's got the alien type mouth and the big eyes coming up over the top. You can see a difference though. If you saw this in black and white, you could tell that this isn't carnage. Maybe it's because the eyes are attached together or something. It's altered just enough to differentiate the two. But that's a good sculpt. I like the teeth sticking out. And while I don't usually like wide open mouths screaming or yelling or whatever, I feel like it's okay here. It's supposed to be that way. And then for a second I thought, oh, that looks like a seam in there. Does the tongue or jaw move? And it doesn't. It's just a softer piece. I have to say, even though it reuses parts, and sometimes when we do get reuse of the Bucky Cat body, there's loose parts or here and there, but this is all nice and tight. It's very solid, but they are thinning down the elbow joints, and while the joint is tight, that just flexes, and it probably shouldn't. Looking at articulation, there is, oh, keep on going, there's a ball on top of a hinge, which gives you good up. There's good down can bury the chin, although it's hard not to bury the chin when your jaw's that big. Not a lot of room for tilt though. Swivel, arm hinges up, around, swivel at the bicep, double elbow comes up, well most of the way, hinge at the wrist and then swivel, hinge at the abs go ooh, forward, arcs back, rotation at the waist, ball at the hip goes forward, back, and 
<laughs> it's about right there. So we'll let the thigh. Double knee. Oh, no, he's just too muscled. I can't quite reach. I can cheat it, though. Bing. So we'll let the shin. Hinge at the ankle goes back. Goes forward. And then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, he comes with this goopy symbiote blade. And if you look at it, that gold is... It's slightly more gold than the rest of the body. And it took me a minute to figure out what this is, but there is a peg right there. And with that, you can pull out the hand, and then, does that just plug right in? Zoop. Oh yeah, actually, <laughs> that's probably never coming off again, because that works great. It works fantastically with this rubbery piece coming down. It almost merges into it, and it looks like the symbiote's just forming this weapon on his hand. That is damn good. Phage stands at six and five sixteenths tall. And as much as I don't know about these symbiotes, I have to admit that it's a good looking group so far. Although, I wish these were further apart in color, you know? I don't even know the names of the other two, but <laughs> when they make them, I will probably buy them. Next up, let's take a look at Maximum Venom Ghost Spider, or the Venom Pool Torso that comes with a bonus figure. Oh, he's got big ass swords too. Now, while I know Gwen and her usual look, I guess this is from the cartoon or something. I have to say, they did a nice job of, well, the cartoon, and then into action figure form of integrating the Venom design into her standard look. There's a very short 90s style jacket on the torso, and there's, a, well, kind of a Venom logo. I like that it's a symmetrical it kind of kicks over to the side a bit but then on the forearms there's this veiny look coming to a spike up at the top and again you're not going to stab yourself with that have some clawed fingers and then down on the feet it's a well it has that blue that she's usually wearing but it's venomized yep get ready to hear the word venom about 500 more times during this review but it's the hood that's really eye-catching instead of taking the face and giving her the big open jaw with the teeth and the tongue they integrated that into the hood I think that's brilliant. Although I probably could do without the tongue hanging off of it. Maybe if it was an option or something or a separate hood that you could take this off. But as is, you're posing it around and you're always fiddling with this. Even though it isn't just stiff material, you can bring it around the body. And thankfully there's a hook on the end. And then you just bring it around the leg and it seems to stay in place. But at the same time, when you start thinking about it, it's the symbiote with a tongue just licking all around her body. And you don't even have to go that direction with it. You can bring it around this way and here, hook it on. Creepy in several different ways, but I, I get that's what they're going for. It's also creepy that there's teeth on the tongue. Those are painted, but there's more sculpted on down that aren't. Also, at first I thought it would be cool if you could take the hood off, but when you pop the head, the head is either glued in there or pegged or something because you can't just pull it out. But that gives you a better look at the spikes that are kind of formed at the shoulder on the jacket. It does look like it uses the lower torso, the upper leg, well, most of the leg, and then also the upper arms. But while we have that off, there's the ball, there's the hinge, pretty standard Marvel Legends. Well, not so standard anymore. They seem to be moving away from it. But the hood does kind of get in the way. There's a little up, there's some down, not a lot of tilt, Lots of swivel. Hinge at the shoulder goes, oh wait, way past 90. Rotates around. Hinge at the elbow comes up. Uh, well, if you force it, it comes past it. But then comes closer to 90. Swivels at the elbow. Hinge at the wrist. Rotation. Ball joint mid torso. And yeah, not the greatest amount of room, but not terrible. <laughs> Get out of the way, tongue go. Ball coming out to the hip comes forward. Little back. Out. Not the greatest. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Bing. Swivel at the shin. Ankle hinges back. Forward. Oh, that's nice forward, actually. And then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, there's a tongue. Ghost Spider stands at five and three quarters to the top of the head. And then, like I said, she uses some parts from Spider Gwen. And then definitely smaller than Spider Woman. And then next, keeping with Maximum Venom, let's take a look at Miles. And I can't seem to find the older Miles figure that I think shares some parts with this. This chest is familiar. Maybe these legs but there's actually more new parts than I thought. The arms actually have this sculpted on. At first I thought, oh, they just painted that up on the shoulder, but nope, that is sculpted all the way down to here. It's this veiny look all the way to the wrist. And then at the hand, you get that elongated claw look to the fingers again. Hey, it's kind of like Venom, maybe Carnage, which makes it a shame that they didn't do that to the torso. I like the thinness of this and the lankiness, 
but it seems really, really flat compared to the arms. There's red on the torso that could have been sculpted too. That would have been awesome with the raised edges here. Because then you get to the feet and you're back to that super detailed look with all of the symbiote sculpted onto it. And then of course the toes, pointy. I'm going to harp on it some more. This is fantastic looking. This is all raised edges and it just makes it kind of gross and creepy and awesome. Again, right there, I thought that may have been a hidden hinge or something. There's nothing to the jaw. But they did leave enough space up in the head around the ball to give you some excellent movement and you get shift forward and you shift back and you look up and it goes up and down and all around. Going over articulation, I just showed you all that head movement. I mean, look at that tilt. Arm hinges up past 90, swivels all the way around. Rotation at the bicep, double elbow comes up to here. And I didn't even realize that was a spike sticking out down there. So of course, when I drop it back down, I pinch my finger between that. That's not a soft material. That's the plastic of the arm. So yeah, watch out for that. Hinge at the wrist, good movement there. And then rotation. Hinge at the torso comes forward, arcs back, swivel at the waist. Ball hip comes, oh, way past 90. Back, out, well, it's the best of the wave so far, I think. Swivel at the thigh, double knee goes all the way back. Oh, kicks his venomized ass. Swivel at the shin, hinge at the ankle. What's going on here? Oh, it was stuck. It goes all the way back. It wasn't stuck. That's a big old detent right there. It goes forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, he comes with a uh, can do attitude and then stands at five and nine sixteenths. And then compared to Ghost Spider and Phage, who uses that standard Bucky Cat body, Miles is appropriately teenage sized. And then next, I'm gonna go with Morbius or SM Vampire Wayne Static. <laughs> Most of the weight of these packages come from the Build-A-Figure parts because I'm already seeing Venom Pool as being a big honking figure. And getting Morbius out of the package, it's so 90s. Was Midnight Suns 90s? I don't remember reading that comic, but I remember the cover from somewhere. I'm not familiar with this torso. It may be new for this figure, or it may not. <laughs> There's so many Marvel Legends at this point, I can't keep track of all the parts and who shares them. But I do recognize the arms and the legs. Those are reused from bodies like Prowler and Prowler. And <laughs> I know that body has been used quite a few times. See, same arms, same legs, same wrinkles right there on the hips. And I'm not sure if they did it on purpose, but this new torso is actually shorter than the torso that is used on this body usually. So that gives Morbius a long arm look. It, well, that's on top of the long creepy fingers. I would usually hate that, but Morbius being Morbius, I'm okay with this creature of the night having kind of otherworldly proportions. If it were used for anyone else, because this does kind of look Ghost Rider-ish or something, I don't know who they could use this for, but if it was on a human, with just a normal head, normal hands, I would hate this. Oh, I didn't realize this was a belt sculpt. Is there something under there? Oh, yeah, there's a whole torso. There's also overlay pieces for the wrists to make it look like a cuff for the glove. Flap kind of hanging down, zipper sculpted in, but what I like even more than that, they painted the silver on the zipper and the stud right here and the other side of the button. And even these rings on the belt part, that's some attention to detail that I appreciate. That is a separate piece too. Well, hell, even the collar piece is separate. There's actually a trench running around the bottom of the neck to inset this separate collar piece. They went further with Morbius than I was expecting. And then on the back you have this tattered cape. It's essentially just a peg plugged into the back. But if you do have them crunched over, peering out, the cape's just gonna kind of stick out. Like I said, elongated fingers with a kind of claw look on the end. This is the wave of crazy elongated finger hands. But then we get up to the head and this is unmistakably Morbius and I love it for some reason. The brow, the red eyes, the open mouth. Again, like the arms being long any other character like a human with yelling i wouldn't care for this but because it's morbius you got to show off fangs uh yeah i'm okay with that in fact i'm more than okay with it the pointy ear up on the side i like that this one is hidden by the hair i just don't know how much i care for the hair i mean i would like if it was laying down kind of a long hair look but it being out behind this it looks like he's just constant motion just whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. If it were going in any other, if it was sticking straight up, I'd probably like it more than it going straight back. It's just a weird style choice, Michael. Why'd you go with that? But going over articulation, much like Miles, 
they left plenty of room up under the skull for the ball to move. So you can look up. Maybe he's supposed to be like this all the time. Flash dance. Can bury the chin. He has some tilt to swivel. Let's take this off while I'm doing this. Oh, detense. Arm hinges up. Swivels around. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes up to about right there. Hinge at the hand. Plenty of movement while it rotates. You would think this would get in the way, but it does hunch forward. Arc back a little bit. Swivel at the waist. Ball at the hip comes forward past 90. Back out. It's a tie at this point. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh, no. I remember this body. It doesn't go past there for some reason. In fact, it's sculpted to go forward a bit. Swivel at the shin. Ankle hinges back. Hinges is forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Morbius comes with, yeah, I guess you could call the cape an accessory, but we already talked about that, so. <sighs> it's Friday, I'm in love. <laughs> Height-wise, Morbius stands, well, to the top of his head, he would be six and a quarter inches tall, but to the top of the hair, it's about six and five-eighths. Because he uses this body, he's taller than the old Morbius, which... Yeah, actually, what is going on with the heads? Oh, no, that doesn't work. The neck is too long for that head. It doesn't sink down enough. That would be a good look. Anyway, taller than the old Morbius, but because of the torso, but tall head... He somehow ends up the same size as Prowler, but you can see where the shoulders lay. And next we'll be opening old Cletus here. And when they first announced another Carnage, I thought, man, they've done a few, haven't they? But once you start looking at the body, yeah, had to have Carnage. Messing around with Carnage, it's familiar, but then you start looking closer and closer and closer, and it's all new sculpt. I mean, it may be based on a body, but they went all out with the textures and the musculature and just... I mean, underneath the black goo, it almost looks like exposed muscle. And it may be a little hard to see, but you can see right there. There's just some lines sculpted in under there. I mean, it could have been just a flat, plain body, and then they sculpt on the symbiote strands and such. But even underneath, it feels like there's something going on to it. There's a depth to it. Down on the legs, there's extra detail. And it's crazy how much of this black sculpt there is all over the red. Now, I have a vision of Carnage in my head way back when, well, almost his first appearance, where it should be more black to it. But I guess this is a more modern rendition. Or, as a lot of people have been talking, this was originally a, maybe a movie version. And then they switched it real quick when the Venom movie got pushed. That's just online speculation. To me, I'm not familiar with modern Carnage and this head with the spiral on the top. So I don't know what's accurate and what's not. But I do know that it's a kick-ass looking Carnage overall. We've seen this with a couple of Carnages, but they have the tendrils kind of sprouting out of the forearms, coming up and around. It's down at the legs, too, coming around the front. Well, it's back on this side, and it's almost vine-like. There's a lot of texture to those. And then on the back, like Phage, it's just a plug-in piece that's nicely conformed to the back muscles. But then you have the flying-out tendrils here, all gnarly and turny and twisty. Again, the arms seem long, but like Morbius, that otherworldly look, that alien look, that supernatural look to it makes me like the figure a little more. Whereas if this was anybody else, I'd be like, to hell with long arms. This whole wave is pushing my pet peeves to the limit and past to the point of, well, okay, I, I like that. But like I said, I am not familiar with this head. I don't know why the spiral's on there. There's a lot of black to the front, too, compared to the rest of the body. And I'm not saying this doesn't look good. I kind of like the design. I can only say my personal opinion on it. And while it's good, it's not my carnage. Seems like that hand is familiar with that claw sticking off the back and then coming down to a point. Either way, let's move this for articulation. There is a ball with a hinge in the neck that allows good up down oh there's shift to that too so and well super jaw of course you're gonna bury the chin there is tilt but you go a little too far i don't know if it's because the head is kind of soft but you can pop that right off no problem swivel butterfly joint but not the greatest amount of movement to it the cutout is open right there 
but then the arm hits on the bottom of it. Got some good in with the arms though. Outside of that hinge, goes up to 90, rotates around, swivel at the bicep, double elbow, where are we going here? Oh, all the way up. Hinge at the wrist, all the way, and then swivel. Hinge at the torso, goes forward, goes back, swivel at the waist, ball at the hip, goes past 90, back, out, oh, okay. Carnage wins this wave so far. Swivel at the thigh, oh, all the way up. <laughs> Rotation at the boot. Ankle goes all the way back. Forward. And then forward facing pin for rocker. And then for accessories, I missed you so. You can pop the head off. And there's an alternate, more classic looking carnage head. And this is probably going to stay on the figure for the rest of my life anyway. I mean, with all this sculpt work, it's not quite classic. But with this head, it's classic enough. And then I guess the toes aren't classic at all. Whoa, though. He can get down. And even kicking a little pose into just neutral stance... He's got a lot of swagger. I really like this Carnage. Carnage stands at, at six and an eighth inches tall. And then here he is with Red Goblin and then the older Carnage, the more classic looking version with a custom head on it. And actually, if you wanted to do that and pop that, it needs to be a little bit deeper, but that's not bad. Or I have my gel cell Cletus. Yeah, that older unmasked head works, but this looks so good. Oh, but I said this was going to be on this for the rest of my life, didn't I? I already lied. And then as... And then as far as single carded figures go, there's Movie Venom. And oh, he's big, he's beefy, he's badass. There is a lot going on with this figure. A lot of good, but there's a couple of things that hold it back. But we'll get to that. First up, look at this figure. It's a big upper body kind of going down to a smaller foot. So it is very top heavy, which is a bit comic booky, but it's also realistic. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, as realistic as a dude in a big symbiote suit can be. Nice muscles to it, but on top of that, the skin also has a slight texture to it. It's all the way around. It almost feels sludgy, like a texture paint on a wall that's done on purpose, you know, and then you paint over it. It just feels like it's constantly moving as the light reflects off of it. Once again, the hands are hanging low. The arms seem slightly long for the torso, which is a running theme, I guess, in the last few figures I've pulled out of this wave. But more than that, there is the pointy elongated fingers. That's what they should have named this wave. The feet aren't reuse, but the toes are spread kind of like we've seen on a couple figures before, but now that I'm looking at it, they're all spread. It's very odd looking. Not odd in a bad way. It's just, you know, continues that alien look. It's kind of disturbing. But then there's these white lightning type bolts that are painted on. Well, I say painted, you can see the pixels to it, so I think they were printed on. But that offsets the just sheer black of this figure a bit, and I like how it just looks random. It's just painted and goes around to the back and comes down to here. But then there's also a bit down at the hands and really when you think about it, Comic Book Venom has white on the back of his hands and then on the torso that goes around to the back. So I can see what they were going with here, but they didn't want to just blatantly put the Spider logo on there, especially with this version of Movie Venom not having any interaction with Spider-Man. But then up at the head, it definitely catches that look from the movie where it looks elongated front to back. Tongue hanging out, the teeth, just gnarly and random and crooked and then with the eyes flat against the top of the head and even asymmetrical a bit with this one being higher and further back there, and then there's some pink paint to it there's a kind of a bone well it's very thin because the pink shows through and then just a super bright white to the eyes which i wish were more like the movie where it looks like a lens or some kind of membrane and then maybe some juiciness to the tongue or something or a dry brush bring out a little bit of that detail. But looking at the package too, it shows how oily the black should be, and this comes across a little matte. I mean, there's a shininess to it, but I really feel like it should be way more reflective. I also have a little gap at the thigh right there. I don't know what that is. But oh, the articulation here. Especially the torso with the floating joint up top and then a hinge under that for the abs. It just crunches, arcs all the way back. It gets tilt. I love this torso. The rest of it is standard and we'll go over that here in a minute. But under the head... I haven't messed with this, I think, in Marvel Legends yet. There's a dumbbell joint up at the top of the neck, 
and it doesn't have a lot of range to it. So unfortunately, even though you get super amount of range in the torso, you can't get them to look up if you're crunched over. And then just personal preference, I would have liked to seen some butterfly joints in here, but they may have not been able to fit that in there with this going as deep as it does to allow this much range. But like I said, going over articulation, oh man, looking up is a bummer. But with that chin, you can touch that to the chest. That allows some tilt and some swivel. Arm hinges up, swivels around. Rotation at the bicep. Double elbow, how far is it? Oh, all the way. Hinge at the wrist, swivel. I already talked about this, but let's talk about it again. Good hula hooping mid torso. But then with the ab crunch, you can go even further. Ball at the hip goes past 90. Back, not so much, runs into the butt sculpt. But out, yep, he wins the wave. Good job, Venom. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee, where are we going with this? Uh, yee, bing. Ankle hinges back all the way. Forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, we've already pulled the head off once. It's nice and easy. And then you pop this alternate head on here. I said that pops on. I said pop on. And that's more of a closed mouth look. He's still grinning and still showing teeth, but it's more streamlined. Eyes are a little bit more symmetrical too. I feel like it goes up just slightly more for some reason. I wonder if you can dremel out a trench or something, but that would be always seen on the back. Venom is a tall figure at seven and three eighths inches tall. I mean, before I get to other Venoms, look how big he is compared to Carnage. Uh, nope, stand up Carnage. Look how big he is next to Carnage. Here he is with the Marvel Legends Venom and the Marvel Legends, is that far from home Spider-Man? Oh. Big Venom. And I know people have a problem with the size of the Moffex Venom, but I love it. And then a port grind I made out of a Disney Toy Box Venom. And then I have no exposure to Venom Pool whatsoever, but it's Venom and Deadpool, so I have to build them. So let's put him together real quick. Where's the other leg? I wish I knew what legs and arms were. Yeah. I'm always afraid I'm gonna put the wrong limb, but I think, do they make different size pegs for that? Pop the head on. How does this work? What is going on? The bands are a separate piece, but that clips to that. Huh, well that's, oh well, it's not super secure, but it holds on better than I thought it would. And there is Venom Pool, and what I like the most here, besides it being Venom and Deadpool, is the proportions. They're kind of wacky. Huge torso, very wide shoulders, but what throws me is the length of the legs. Once again, we got the clawed fingers and we have the hands that hang too low. I mean, I, that's this wave. But I like it here because it makes him look thick as hell. While you can see muscle in all the black parts, it almost looks like, well, I don't know what the, why is this sewn? Is it just on top of it and it's got little like staples or something? But on the red parts, you get kind of a basketball texture to it. It's a very nice contrast to the darker parts. And then for swords, it looks like it's wrapped all the way down and around. The pouches are sculpted on. I wish the little buttons were painted, but I don't know. As cool as this figure is, oh, well, you come around to the belt buckle, there is some metallic red right there. And there's silver painted on, well, like those studs in the costume, there's also these buckles down here at these straps. And then up here on the front where it comes together. Right now. Clunky, chunky feet down at the bottom. You can see the edge of the sole sculpted onto the bottom. And then maybe they try to lock them up or something because Deadpool's usual bands around the wrists and the ankles, they have some kind of chain loops on them, I guess to chain them down or I, I don't know what those are for, but they look cool. First, I thought this was a holster on these straps, but nope, another pouch, cause <laughs> you can never have too many pouches. And then up at the head, this is the thing, actually looking at the overall figure, this is the thing that makes you go, oh, it's Venom. Because if you're just looking at this, you almost think Hulk pool or something with the teeth, with the tongue. I like that it's purple. It could have been red, but that would have kind of blended in with the rest of the costume. So, hey, make it purple, make it stand out. And then the eyes set inside the black, more of those silver staples. I like how random they are too. That doesn't match side to side. It's just snap, 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 snap. Going over articulation, there's way more, what, hey, hey, you can look up. What is going on? Oh, because he has a hinge. Can look down, not a lot of tilt because it's down over big shoulders, but there is swivel. Arm hinges, oh, it goes to about right there. Oh, no, it doesn't, it goes further than that. What is happening right there, the end of the trench cut out for the articulation, it's hitting on the torso. So if you push up and pull, it stops right there. If you push the shoulder down, and make it go inside, you can get to almost 90. Swivels around, rotation at the bicep. Single elbow goes 
to 90. Those bands are a separate piece. Let's see how far they go up to get out of the way of the hinge for the wrist. Yeah, that's not bad. Swivel, hinge at the torso, kicks forward one click, and back a little bit. Rotation at the waist. Ball comes out to the hip, goes up to almost 90. Back, out. Is that pouches hitting? Let's try the left side. Venom still beats that. Swivel at the thigh, double knee. There's no way this is gonna happen. Oh, it's getting way closer than I thought. Pow! Again, the bands are a separate piece. You can rotate those around, but the ankle goes back, forward, and then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, he has open clawed hands, but you can pop those out and well, I guess you could get rid of these if you want, but I like the look of those. And that gives you grip hands. Looking at the sheaths that I plugged onto the back, these swords come out. And there's some nice design work right here. I don't know what these cutouts are for, but hey, this works. It's Deadpool. He needs a sword, right? <laughs> I went to push right here and realized, oh, that's some soft material, so I may not want to push there. Damn, that looks awesome. I don't know what Venom Pool is meant to be, but he can be a badass on my shelf. There's a better look at the overall body shape. There, I don't know why I like this shape so much. It's like a modern Hulk or something. I would like to see more characters with these proportions. Venom Pool stands at seven and three quarter inches tall, which puts him a little bit bigger than Monster Venom, but a little bit shorter than Hulk. A little bit smaller than Wendigo, but about the same size as Crimson Dynamo. And not that much taller than the movie Venom, but whoa, way bigger in Carnage. So at the end of the day, even though I wanted this wave simply for the Venom Pool, because, well, it's Deadpool, I like the figures a lot more than I thought I would. I don't have a lot of attachment to these versions of Ghost Spider and Miles, but they have a unique look. They're recognizable as their characters, but they're in the midst of being venomized, I guess. It's the same for Phage. I've never read a comic with this character or the rest of that symbiote group, but I do like this, even more so when paired with Lasher and Scream. Morbius, I tend to like the classic look more, but because of the, well, damn it, the long arms, I, I do like this look for him. I just don't care for the hair. Carnage, not 100% classic, but a good representation of Carnage on the shelf. There's a lot of sculpting that went on here, and it just makes him a cool figure. Again, I like the Venom movie, so it's nice to have a figure of him, especially seeing how much engineering they put into that. I've got some nitpicks, but hey, I've got an awesome movie Venom, so that works out. But then there's Venom Pool. Big honking Deadpool with some crazy Venom aspects. <laughs> What's not to like? This wave is a bit light on accessories, but I got to think that the budget went to, well, Carnage is an all-new sculpt, Venom is an all-new sculpt, Phage has some new pieces, Ghost Spider and Miles have some new pieces, Morbius has that new torso, new hands, new head, and then the big block that is Venom Pool that can't be reused anywhere. That's it. Besides me really liking that body shape and would like to see a modern type Hulk on it, they can't use the actual body here with the detailing. So it's just a fun wave. It would be even more fun if you're into symbiotes and into Venom. I, I like Venom, I like Carnage, but beyond that, I, I don't have a lot of exposure to it. But good figures is good figures. And fun figures is fun figures. And <laughs> that makes me want to go back and read some stories. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. I may try to put a gloss coat on Venom. Give him some shine. Give him some oiliness or something. Because I could live with the head not looking up, but if him standing on the shelf looking like a badass in that really deep oily look oh maybe some floor polish or something yeah i may have to experiment here